Some pretty cynical misappropriation of classical images for cheap hip-hop wall art, a Leipzig-based artist fusing graffiti with artificial intelligence, and a drop-dead gorgeous LA-based Indian art entrepreneur. All this and more to kick off our 2022 exploration of Retmo themes and theories. Given that the What's Next in Art video has been a clear winner in terms of views and likes, I wanted to follow up on this and direct you towards some of the trends and the ideas that actually do suggest what's next. I've been struck recently by advertising that's bombarding me on every platform, it seems, for wall art created by a certain Chris Bellini. Bellini sets himself up as an anonymous artist. I think we've seen that somewhere before. He's also locked himself very firmly into the hip-hop youth-orientated market. His work sells in limited editions of 250 pieces. It's low-priced prints on paper or canvas, selling for upwards of 95 euro. The stuff that he sells riffs on classical icons, which are manipulated digitally with the addition of graffiti, 17th century Dutch floral paintings, photographs, and maybe a swoosh branded sneaker or two. There's very little thought or craft here, just appropriation of imagery. But within the space of rap and hip hop culture, where sampling after all is a fundamental ingredient, I get it totally. I've no doubt that there's a market for this type of work, and honestly, I have no problem with it either. Anyone who's looking for original art rather than a print from Ikea to hang on their wall is a collector of sorts. And hey, we all have to start somewhere. As a retromodernist, I personally look for work where there is a connection with history and a timeline that links styles and human experiences, but each to his or her own. Digging a little deeper, I also saw that Chris Bellini had been mentioned in a Forbes magazine article, but actually he just gets a nod in a piece which is about a real superstar of what I think is the new generation of art consultants and entrepreneurs, and that is one Miss Arushi Kapoor. 25-year-old Arushi considers herself as an entrepreneur first, an art consultant and gallery owner next. Now, I did say drop dead gorgeous, and that probably helps in her mission, but I promise you it's not a sexist comment. If she was a he, I'd have said it all the same. Arushi has a seriously beautiful mind, and what she describes as a hustler attitude. Everybody needs art, she says, and we're with you there, Arushi. After publishing a book at only 16 years of age, and then attending USC Marshall School of Business, Arushi set up Arts Op, a consultancy, cultural center, and art warehouse based in Echo Park, Los Angeles, also with offices in London and New Delhi. She specializes in working with local female artists and has a broad and eclectic range of work available, both in her galleries and online. These range from stunningly beautiful skateboard decks by Los Angeles artist Leila Nazarian, which use traditional Persian carpet designs and maquetry in their construction, very retro-modern, to paintings by the likes of Lindsay Dawn, Sophie Kipner, and Lindsay Noble, as well as super cool hand-painted denim jackets. Arushi is also active in the NFT market with non-fungibles based on the work of Lindsay Dawn. The Forbes article on Arushi, which also mentions Chris Bellini, is actually focused on the explosion of the AI art market ever since Christie's in New York put the portrait of Edmund de Bellamy, an algorithm-generated print piece, up for auction, with a pre-auction estimated value of seven to $10,000 in 2018. When it smashed those expectations and sold for $432,000, it sparked off a gold rush. The portrait was created by a Paris-based group called Obvious using generative adversarial network software package with quite a bit of help as it transpired later from their friends. The piece has been marked up as a part of a tradition dating back to Marcel Duchamp's 1913 bicycle wheel and Jean Tangley's late 1950s metamatics, which call into question the role of the artist 
and the basis of the modern art market. Now, the portrait itself is a pretty fuzzy, off-centre effort for which the algorithm compiled fragments of 15,000 portraits found online in WikiArt and signed at the bottom with a part of the algorithm code that created it. Is it art or not? Well, the question's pretty redundant in all honesty, and the answers are dictated anyway by the art market. An art market which will happily sell you artist shit in a can, a banana taped to a wall, or perhaps the pick of the bunch, an invisible sculpture made quite literally of nothing. According to the Italian conceptualist Salvatore Garau, his work, called Il Sono, I Am, asks you to activate the power of the imagination. Bang on in the case of the buyer, who paid a cool 15,000 euro just to prove how fervent his imagination was in June 2021. Garau went on to explain that for him, painting is no longer sufficient by itself to describe what's happening all around us to our planet. He's right on that score, shades of don't look up. So predicting what's next in art becomes even more difficult. We've done everything from birth, death, torture, blood and faeces to empty spaces, art that can be only seen in your heart. By virtue of its connection to 150,000 other works and the link to the rationale of Duchamp and Tangeli, I can safely say that the portrait of Edmond de Bellamy fits perfectly into the narrative of retromodernist art. Let's be clear, art and art history in particular are not just about the past, but they're also about what's driving the future. Just as the invention of tubes of oil paint was massive in allowing artists the freedom to go outside and paint on location, so digital cameras, Photoshop and AI are the tools of a new art world, so really there are no limits to what could be next. Another case in point is the Leipzig-based artist Bon Trulove, who I came across on Obvious Art's website. Now, Trulove mixes up street art and graffiti with digital, turning out works such as Parietal Burner No. 2. No paint, no acrylic, no canvas, paper or board, but generation of parietal drawings using generative adversarial networks again, combined with style transfer algorithms to apply Bon Trulove's style to the generated drawing of Le Grotte de la Sceau. If you understood that, you're a better man than I. Now, if that ain't retromodernism, I don't know what is. An artwork that bridges the oldest form of art with the newest form of technology, and the oldest form of expression on walls with the most contemporary one. The honest answer is that without the aid of algorithms, Nobody, and least of all myself, can predict what's next in art. What I can say though, is that I fully agree with Arushi Kapoor in saying that there is always gonna be some human invention required to create out of the park art. I'll leave you to ponder that one. Do send comments or questions via the space below. Please like, or better still, subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and are happy to encourage me to keep making new ones. Thanks again for tuning in and see you soon. Ciao for now.